a week ago, uh, Thursday and Friday, uh, Marcy and uh, Jesse and I attended the Global Leadership Summit. Now, when I say attended, I guess it attended us. We sat in the living room and watched it uh, on the Internet, and um, it was a good two days. One thing that I definitely recall was a speaker, I think it was on Friday, who spoke about the subject of forgiveness. I had already planned to preach on forgiveness this Sunday, but as I sat there and listened to that message, it brought a lot of thoughts in my mind about the whole subject of forgiveness and the importance of it. Jesus talked about forgiveness in a number of places. One of those is the Lord's Prayer. Would you say it with me this morning, please? Prayer that prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. I think about that verse 12. Forgive us our debts. Luke chapter 11 says, forgive us our sins. It's a huge, powerful prayer. But it brings out a lot of thoughts. One of the thoughts that it brings out of my mind is that you and I are capable of doing a very human thing, holding a grudge. It's easy to be upset. It's easy to be mad. It's easy to be beyond righteously indignant and allow things to be blown way out of proportion. I uh, came across some uh, pictures that uh, just brought some thoughts in my mind about uh, the whole subject of uh, this thing. And one of the things that um, came across my mind was this. Have you ever been crazy about somebody back in the day only to see them now and think, I'm glad I missed that ship? But here's a more serious note. It's hard to trust when all you have from the past is evidence why you shouldn't. And then there's this thought here. Have you ever had one of those days when you're holding a stick and everybody looks like a panada? A little bit humorous, but very true. We can hold a grudge. We can get upset at others. I, I had some church members years ago that the, uh, there's an older man, he came to me one Sunday, and he said, Eunice shook my finger today. I stuck my finger out to her, and she shook it and said, hello. I said, is that unusual? He said, oh, we haven't spoken to each other in 25 years. Now, he was a retired minister. She was our church pianist. They hadn't spoken to each other in 25 years, and I asked him, why not? He said, I have no idea. Something happened 25 years ago. We got upset with each other. We haven't spoken to each other since. It's easy to hold a grudge. It's easy to get upset. It's easy to get mad, beyond righteously indignant, and allow things to get blown way out of proportion. I also know this. We are also capable of doing a Christian thing, loving others without question. I appreciated Ronell's uh, call to worship this morning, reminding us about love, reminding us allowing room for doubt in people's motives, reminding us that love is forgiving without question. Forgive means to give up resentment against another, pardon, no desire to punish, no desire to see revenge. You see, we can have this attitude of they're going to get theirs, but that attitude is gone 
when we truly forgive. I have to tell you, yesterday we went out to uh, Wally World. Nothing unusual about that. And as we pulled in, I, I, I always look for a close-up parking spot. Uh, I, I keep looking and thinking, maybe I should start hobbling and get a handicap permit because they always all seem to be empty. But nevertheless, I always look for a close-up spot. And there it was, a car backing out, second spot in the line just almost by the door. And I thought, hooray, my favorite spot's open. And as I'm pulling around there, here comes a car from the other way, and I could see the guy starting to, and I could just see him going in there, and I said, don't you dare. I, I moved a little bit quicker, and I, I started my turn to block him off, and, I, and, and he kept moving, and I was saying, don't you dare. If you pull in there, I'm going to get out there, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you that i got to find another spot. Because my first thought was, I'm going to punch your lights out. I have no idea where he ended up parking. I don't care. It was hot. I was glad I had that close-up spot. But there was no attitude for revenge. There was no attitude for, if he had taken the spot, I'd have just gone and found another one. No big deal. You see, we have to have that give and take in our lives. What I'm really looking at here is, is what Jesus was saying. Forgive us our debts. That's talking to him. Forgive us our sins. God through Jesus gave us mercy. He gave us forgiveness. That's the hallmark of Christianity. When we go to Jesus and we say, Father, forgive me of my sins, our sins are gone. Psalms 103.12 says, Our sins are removed as far as the east is from the west. Hebrews 8.12 says, I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. Wow. Well, yeah, let me give you an example of how we should look at God's forgiveness. I'm guessing that most of us have heard the saying, forgive and forget. Sadly, we have come to believe that forgetting is a part of forgiving. In our humanness, in our humanness, that causes a real problem for many people because they feel fairly certain that they've taken biblical steps to forgive somebody, but since they can't forget about the harm done to them, they must not have truly forgiven the person who harmed them. Now, that's the case sometimes, but it's not always true. For instance, if a, if a person growing up being molested as a child, it's really unlikely that they will ever forget that happened. However, it does not mean they can't forgive the person who did it. When I look at those verses I just read, it tells me that God will never, ever bring a sin up against me anymore. It doesn't say he forgets. It's just that he never brings it up to us again. I wonder if God sits up there in heaven and goes, you know, that person used to really be a character. You know, they used to do this and this and this, but look at what God's grace has done for them. Look what forgiveness did for them. Look at the change in their lives. Forgiveness is not contingent on forgetting. It's about putting it in the past. God has forgiven us. He's cleansed us. He's cleaned us up. He's transformed us. And he does not throw it back in our faces anymore. Jesus has given us mercy. So Jesus gave us his huge directive. Forgive as we forgive others. Forgive us our debts. we forgive others. I found over in Matthew chapter 18, three scenarios. A fellow Christian was caught in a sin. Um, in verse 15, it says, if your brother sins against you, go and show him his fault just between the two of you. It, 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 that, that's a tacky thing to do sometimes, a touchy thing to do sometimes. 
I had a friend hit my office here a few years ago, and he said, I need to talk to you. He called ahead of time. He showed up here at the office, and he said, I want you to know that I'm upset with you. Okay. What did I do to upset you? And he told me, and I have to admit, I wanted to laugh. I had said something in a joking manner, and they took it wrong. And I wondered what had happened, because for about three or four weeks, this person was just not communicating and didn't call like they normally did. And, and I'm so glad they came into the office and talked to me. It was not a member of this church. It was a friendship on the outside. And between the two of us, a friendship was saved and salvaged. Galatians 6, 1 says, Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Well, the verse I read there in Matthew chapter 18 goes on to say, if you've gone to somebody and it doesn't work out between you, uh, and that goes along with this other verse as well, bring somebody else along and gently, gently talk to that person. You see, part of all this is about the fact that we all need to get to heaven together. And if we see somebody in the church who's slipping away, we don't need to scratch our heads and go, oh, I wonder what happened. We need to go to that person and say, I'm praying for you. I want to bring you back into the family. I want to see you back. What can I do to help you? We need to bring God's joy back to a person who's simply setting up a pattern heading to disaster. Matthew 18, 17 says, if a person refuses to listen, take it to the church. Well, we have this whole thing in the Nazarene church where if there's a church member who's gone bad, you have to try to restore them gently. And if they don't, you can go to the church board and say, they need to be taken off the membership rolls. Some religions call it excommunicating if they don't listen. That's an extreme thing to have to do. I prefer the forgiveness way. There's a big question here. Matthew 18, 21. Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? A little bit of history here. The religious leaders of the day would forgive three times, then start a punishment. Peter was being very generous. So we'll say to our kids, I'm going to count to three and you're going to get it. One, two, two and a half, two and a quarter, two and eight tenths, two and nine tenths, three. Why don't we just count to seven in the first place? Amos chapter one. God forgave Israel's enemies three times, then he punished them. But Jesus said, forgive 70 times seven, 490 times. Now the point is not to count. The number was set high to point out that forgiveness should never end. It explains God's forgiveness. It's without end. His grace towards us is limitless. If I'm going to serve him and expect his blessings in my life, I will forgive as he forgave without questions, without judgment, without fanfare. You see, Jesus gave us a key to happiness here. I, I attended a retreat some years ago, and the topic was how to keep from becoming a bitter old person. And I don't remember the whole thing, but I do remember this. Be willing to forgive. A key 
ingredient to our happiness is forgiving. It's that once we forgive a person for an offense, we should never bring it up to use against that person again. It should be in the past. But what about forgetting? We may never forget. I have heard people recently say, boy, I remember when so-and-so was such a way, I, I don't know if I can ever trust them again. That's not scriptural. I may remember the way somebody was, but praise God for the way they've changed now. Think about the reference of the young lady, attacked, beaten, molested, never forgetting. But they can forgive and never bring it up to their attacker again. You see, that's God's way. That's what Jesus was talking about. Marriages, families, friendships could be saved and salvaged with this attitude. Organizations and churches could be turned around with this attitude. I, I've heard it said, well, so-and-so is just never going to change. What about that person you just can't be around? They just won't change. They keep on hurting you, and they keep on hurting others. I, I go back to Matthew 8, 17, 18, 17. Take it to the church. If they refuse to listen, treat them like a pagan or a tax collector. Forgive them. Just don't put yourself in the place to be constantly hurt. Pray for them. Pray that somebody will get in that person's way and be able to bring them back. Unconditional forgiveness. If you're praying and God brings something to your mind that you're holding on to as a grudge, Forgive the person in your heart so that God will also forgive you. That's Mark eleven twenty five. That's our job, forgiving. And I don't know about you, but I've learned that when I forgive, I'm no longer praying through a brick wall. Heaven's gates are wide open and God's blessings keep coming down.